All right, fantastic. Well, uh, allow me to make introductions. Um, this is indeed the Neighborhood Traffic Calming Program public meeting for the uh, South Columbia Avenue Traffic Calming Program from 51st to 55th Street. I'm Jeremy Staley. I work with CEC and we are a consulting firm that works with the city of Tulsa, uh, particularly in this facet uh, to assist them with the neighborhood, neighborhood Traffic Calming Program. And with me tonight are Mary Kay Rowe. She works at CEC and we also have two uh, gentlemen from the traffic department at the city of Tulsa. We've got Michael Van Slyke and uh, Russell Bausch uh, from the city of Tulsa as well. Uh, we're glad that they can be a part of this meeting and they certainly can be very helpful in answering questions, especially if they get outside the, one, the realm of traffic calming um, issues. Um, let's see here. Um, I'm going to ask, I'm going to mute everybody and just to let you know um, that will allow me to go forward with this presentation uninterrupted. We've got a chat box that's available if you click the chat down at the bottom. Uh, feel free to type questions in there. I can answer those or Russell or Michael can. Um, and we certainly can visit about those after I'm done with the presentation. The presentation will not take very long, uh, but it would allow you while you're thinking of questions to at least put them down there. That way we can address them if they're not addressed during the presentation uh, by one of the um, people working with this. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody and we'll proceed on. Then um, we can deal with questions once that's over. Okay. Awesome. Um, okay. So this project started by Mr. Horwitz way back in May, I believe, of 2017, uh, having speeding going on the road. He found out about the neighborhood traffic calming program for the city of Tulsa. He filled out an application. Uh, we shortly after that did a traffic study, and uh, then we ran out of funds. So there was a, a good long wait between now and, and then uh, before those funds became available through the Improve Our Tulsa 2 bond issue that was voted on and passed back in November of last year. And so here we are now, uh, and I'll go into the process a little bit further, but just to let you know, that's how this whole thing started. Um, that traffic study was done in July of 17, and there are two primary warrants to state whether a if speed humps are warranted on a project. And those two warrants are um, traffic volumes must be 600 vehicles per day or higher for the, the street stretch we're talking about. Um, and the 85th percentile for the speed during that study must exceed five mile per hour greater than the posted speed limit, which in this, or unposted for some cases, but the speed limit on this street is 25 mile per hour. So the speed limit, the 85th percentile speed must have exceeded 30 mile per hour. So after that study was done, we found out that the, the highest volume per day that we had were 967 or 957 vehicles per day and we reached 30.9 mile per hour as the 85th percentile. So it was well within uh, the, the requirements for this uh, program. There are a few other warrants that we have to, or factors that we consider uh, before we move forward with uh, the next step on the project, if those two warrants um, are, are valid. One is um, the street must abut neighbor uh, residential um, lots. It, it can't be through a commercial area, which this certainly does. The street must not have um, more than one lane in each direction, meaning this is not intended to be a for four-line streets. It's, it's for uh, residential collector streets. Uh, the street segment must be at least 300 foot in length. Um, the street should also uh, have a regulatory speed of 30 mile per hour or less. And the street must have curb and gutter to prevent vehicle runarounds, meaning where we put the speed humps up, uh, if it's just shallow bar ditches, people just drive right around the speed humps. They'll drive right through people's yards. They'll run over mailboxes. Uh, so it's important that we have that barrier on the sides of the street to keep people on the street. And last, um, it must be put on a residential collector where we don't have tra traffic signals at, at both the beginning and the ending points uh, of the, the roadway. And, and that does happen, unfortunately, in some areas because it's a, a primary, it's a a higher order of a street and it's intended for higher volumes to go through there. So once a project passes uh, the two primary warrants and all these other uh, factors are, are checked off, then the next step is to move forward with the petition, petition and endorsement process. And uh, we provide 
a list of street addresses, NCOG provides those to us, and uh, we gave that listing of addresses to Mr. Horwitz for him to go through and to get the, the petition signed by a certain percentage of people living along that street. We have two requirements. One, 80% of the residences or addresses, uh, whether people rent, they own, or what have you, 80% of those people living along that street must sign um, those residences must be represented with the signature on the petition. 67% of the total amount of residences on that street need to be in favor of it. They need to vote yes. Uh, when this petition process was done, uh, we ended up with 81% of the people on the, the residences signing the petition and all of them were in favor of it. And I know that means there may be some people that didn't sign that are not in favor of it, but we did hit our 80% mark and we certainly hit our 67% mark. So we're, um, we're, we met that uh, checkbox. Um, if this street uh, segment falls within a, a neighborhood or homeowners association that has jurisdiction and control over that neighborhood, they also have to sign off on this and, and meet and decide whether they're in favor or not. Knowing that if speed humps go on this one street, it is very possible that traffic may divert to an adjacent street and speeding will become an issue there. So it's important that the whole neighborhood be made aware of that. It's my understanding this neighborhood does not have that. Um, so we do not have, uh, we did not have that requirement for that endorsement statement to be done by the HOA. So once that whole process is done, a speed hump layout is designed. There's criteria that the city has uh, provided us that uh, tells us where those speed humps are supposed to be located within a block or within a, a long street segment. Um, so meaning we just don't put these speed humps wherever we want. And there are some key distances in there. One is the, the goal to have no more than 600 foot between speed humps. And I know some people are gonna say, you got way too many speed humps on that street. Well, the goal is to try and put one within a block so long as that block is around 250 to 300 foot. And for longer stretches where that block stretches now a thousand foot, we may get away with just having two or three within that uh, area. But the overall controlling one is to not exceed 600 feet. And the reason for that is uh, vehicles will speed between the speed humps if that distance gets longer. So it's important that we try and keep these within the tolerances that the program allows. Um, <clears throat> I believe I'm ready now to share my screen and I'm going to show you the plans. You should have all received these in the mail with the invitation for this meeting. So there's nothing new on here that you may not have seen, but I'm just going to go through this, share the screen, and we'll just go um, block by block and show where these are located. If you all can see my screen, just shake your head and let me know you can see it. Excellent. Thank you. All right. I'm going to. Go full screen here. Very good. Okay, so we are starting here at 55th place on this. Wait, let me see. I am at the right one. Yes. Okay, very good. Okay, so we are starting here with um, north to the right. This is the beginning of the project at 55th Street. Oh, sorry, 55th place. And our first speed hump occurs in between the, the, the two residences on the west and the east. Um, as you can see, we've got a distance of 172 foot um, between the beginning of the project and that first speed hump. Ideally, we try to keep that within 150 to 250 foot of the intersection beginning. Um, then you can see we've got a little over 500 foot between that first speed hump and the second speed hump, which is down around 5322 South Columbia Avenue. And then moving on to the next sheet, we've got again another 530 foot or so between that second speed hump and this third speed hump, which is around 520, oh, sorry, 5230 uh, South Columbia Avenue. And then the fourth speed hump looks to be around 460 foot or so away. Uh, again, we're trying to keep that at 600 foot or less, but still trying to keep. Uh, speed humps one within a block or as that stretches out longer we're able to get away with two or, or more. Um, looking on to the final sheet looks like we've got around 440 foot between that fourth speed hump and the fifth speed hump which is right at uh, near uh, 51st street um, and in looking at that distance we have 85 foot and the reason for that is uh, for us to push this even further to the south because of the way the driveways are located this was the best place for that. 
Um, we try to keep the edge of the speed hump, of, if possible, 10 foot away from the radius of your drive. That way you can back out of your drive without hitting one of those speed humps every single time you back out. Um, so there is uh, the speed hump layout and you can ask questions about that as soon as I'm done with this presentation. Um, but next I'd like to go briefly over what these speed humps look like, their shape and the striping and everything. So this sheet here is our standard details for the speed hump. Uh, the middle detail shows a plan view of it. These speed humps are 22 foot long as you measure along lengthwise on the street. And the width of them is two foot shy of the gutter or the face of curve on each side. So with this being a, a 26 foot wide street, uh, these speed humps are 22 foot wide from edge to edge. And there's a 24 inch taper, as you can see on section BB at the top near the center, there's a 24 inch taper there. Uh, the reason why we have that gap between the curb and that taper, two things. One, we want to allow drainage water from the gutter to go through there. And secondly, we want to allow a place for people to ride a bike and not have to go over these speed humps. And with this typical section, that easily allows that. Section AA is cut down the length longitudinally of the speed hump. And this shows the parabolic shape that we have um, for those hitting these speed humps. Um, they start out flush with the grade and within six foot they transition to a three and a half inch height. Uh, and then there's a 10 foot long platform, relatively flat platform on the top before the parabolic shape begins to depress down to match existing grade again. That parabolic shape is a, a very smooth transition. Um, and I, I do want to point out that these speed humps are intended to slow people down that are exceeding the speed limit. You can drive over these speed humps easily going 20 or 25 miles per hour in, in most vehicles, not all, but most vehicles, you can drive the speed limit and, and be fine. You might get a bit of a jolt. Um, you know, you wouldn't want to hold a cup of coffee that's really full. It might splatter on you, uh, but you can easily traverse these and not feel uh, bad effects. Uh, while you're going the speed limit or slightly under. If vehicles do exceed the speed limit a lot, say they're going 30 or 35 mile an hour, they will, they could damage their car or they could uh, um, cause some issues there. It'll be very uncomfortable for them to drive that. So these are intended to slow those speeds down. Uh, also in the, the, the center, the, the middle detail and the lower one, it shows just striping those um, uh, arrows that are, are pointing along those uh, those are striped per MUTCD and uh, manual of uh, uniform traffic control devices, which governs the where, where signs go and striping on the roadways. And uh, so that is easy for people to see at night. There'll be reflective paint on there. Uh, it'll be white, of course, as well. Uh, it's easy for people to see during the day and at night. That middle detail also shows that we are we place a speed hump sign right adjacent to the beginning of the speed hump and approaching from both directions. And there's a little arrow that goes down at an angle to let people know that's where the speed hump is. Again, these signs uh, show people clearly at night or during the day that this speed hump is here. And also if we get snow or icy conditions in the city has plows going out on this route, I don't know if it's a main route to be plowed. Um, sometimes there's people that are nice in the neighborhood and they've got the ability to do that and they do, but it will give people a warning if there's uh, heavy snow that this speed hump is here to help them not damage their, um, their equipment or the speed hump itself. Moving on, um, as I mentioned before, the, the funding source for this project is the Improve Our Tulsa 2 bond issue that was passed last November. Um, the city of Tulsa um, elected to construct all the speed humps under this new bond issue in-house. And the city of Tulsa has done this uh, on a number of projects. Um, they were able to construct um, typically six to seven speed humps compared to one that we have to pay a contractor for. Um, and the reason for that primarily being the contractor uh, has all the costs of mobilization, equipment, labor, and the city of Tulsa has these forces on staff already. So they're able to pour their money into uh, supplies and materials uh, that allows their dollars to go a lot farther. So uh, they decided early on that's the way we're going to proceed. Um, the city does a good job in fabricating these and constructing them. And um, the, the only drawback is um, sometimes it may we're going to be put on a bit of a waiting list in order to get these constructed. And we want to let people know that up front. 
if you bid this thing, the contractor's got X amount of days to construct it, and by contract, they have to do that. The city uses this um, when available to be able to, because um, they still have their maintenance job and, and projects that they're working on. Um, they do a reasonable good job to get these installed in a, in a fair amount of time. And once they do touch an area, they don't leave it sit for weeks on end without finishing it. They typically are able to do one speed hump a day. So on this particular project, we've got five speed humps. More than likely, they'll be on that site for a week to maybe a week and a half. The striping and the signage may lag by um, a couple weeks or so. Typically, that follows up fairly shortly thereafter. But they're typically able to get one speed hump done a day. But by them doing this internally, we're able to uh, implement this where people need it, like in this particular street. So it saves us a lot of money. Uh, following this meeting, um, which is being recorded, as I mentioned, is this meeting is going to be posted on the city's YouTube channel. And there is a link on the Improver Tulsa website that takes you to the YouTube channel we have to allow a two week comment period for people to be able to look at that meeting for those that weren't able to attend this tonight and uh, call me or email me questions uh, and, and comments and we'll do our best to implement them if at all possible within the, the guidelines of the program. Um, and as soon as that two week period is expired and we address any of those comments and fix the plans, this will be put on the list for the city to be able to move forward and construct. Um, the phone number to reach me uh, for any comments is 918-663-9401. Again, that's 918-663-9401. And my email address is jeremy, J-E-R-E-M-Y dot Staley, S-T-A-H-L-E at connect, like connecting a cable, followed by C-E-C, -E Charlie, Echo Charlie dot com. So again, that's jeremy dot Staley at connect, C-E-C -E dot com. I am now going to stop sharing. I'll be happy to pull that back up. Uh, if you all would like to unmute yourselves to ask any questions, feel free to do so. And I am going to at least ask you all to unmute if you would like to do so. You may do that at this time and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Hey Jeremy, one thing I wanted to point out, this is Russell. Um, the signs we're actually trying to coordinate to have those installed at the same time that speed humps are installed. Excellent. That way there's no any delay between between having them installed and, and signs being put in. And so we are actually trying to coordinate that so they get, get installed at the same time. Excellent. The Thank you, Russell. Itself, the striping itself might be delayed a little bit, but the signs, the plan is to have them in the same time as the speed humps. That's great. Thank you, Russell. Yeah, this is all very exciting. So I appreciate Jeremy. That was a phenomenal presentation. And uh, I appreciate the various graphs that you sent out to everyone and the way you kept us informed. I just really, uh, it's been a great partnership. So thank you for this. You're welcome. You're welcome. I appreciate your patience. I know it's pretty tough to wait a long time for this. And <laughs> Um, unfortunately, most of the, 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 the projects that we're trying to construct right now have been waiting around for about two and a half to three years uh, because we had so many queued up and we ran out of money and well, we just have to sit until more, until more money is procured. And uh, so we are grateful to have that uh, put in this bond issue when we can move forward with that. I don't want this meeting to drag out just for the sake of saying, hey, our meeting lasted so long. So I don't want to keep anybody. Um, if there's no other questions here, we can go ahead and end this meeting here. Um, again, if you do have any questions, just email me or call me and I'll be happy to address those as best as I can. And again, if you have comments over the plans, uh, we'll do our best to accommodate it as long as it fits within the guidelines of the program. We we want to be able to hear what you have to say and, and fix it or adjust it if we can. I've I want to one. thank you. Yes, sir. I've got one question. Yes. Uh, so were there any residents south of 55th that were part of the uh, a survey? No, it, it, we only survey the people that are directly along that street segment. And in this case, it went from uh, 55th place up to 51st street. Okay, because I know we get a lot of traffic 
south of that area as well. So. Yeah, and, and honestly, when you've got near a thousand vehicles per day, there's clearly cut through traffic going through there. Um, so yeah, there'll, there'll be some people surprised the first day the city's out there constructing these speed humps. <laughs> but that's good. They can go. They can go somewhere else or stay on the arterials like they're supposed to. Right. I will say um, this question normally comes up. Um, people normally ask how how much does this affect the speed on the street? And we generally we typically try to do a, a study right after this is constructed. And um, the last several that we've done has shown typically the 85th percentile speed comes down around two to three mile per hour. And, and what that does is it, it, it shaves off those people that are going 40 or 45 mile per hour. And I didn't look through the speed study before this meeting to see how, how fast people go because we've had some people that have gone 70 mile per hour on streets like this. Um, and what this does is it, it curtails those extreme uh, speeds down to a reasonable number and the people that are driving the speed limit or driving under it are not affected by this. And so, but it does pull that speed down. And um, we have shown those studies, it does those cut through people, they go somewhere else. So it typically reduces the volume of traffic and it, it reduces the speed as well. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Well, I thank you very much, Jeremy, and everyone else for, um, I was so glad because we do have a lot of uh, young couples with babies now walking the streets. We've had older, and it just became, ever since the widened 51st and tore down the buildings that were there, people were cutting down to cut through. And I think that's where a lot of the traffic that you gauged initially came from. That makes sense. So well, I hope this project is a success in your eyes and uh, we'll wait to that two month, uh, two week comment period to end. And uh, we'll coordinate with Mr. Horowitz once that period is done and uh, we'll get this slated on the city's schedule. Um, can't promise you that we'll make this project before the, the, the cold, colder weather sets in because generally by the middle of November, it gets to be challenging to install asphalt. So it is possible that this project may get pushed to March or April. Um, it all depends. Some years we have warm weather going all the way into December and some we don't. Um, I do think the weather forecaster said that we should have a, a warmer fall than normal. So it is, it is possible that this thing could get, still be constructed this year, but. Um, I just have one question, Jeremy. When they start, when once they started, how long does it take to finish it? They they generally get one done a day, and with us having five uh, to be done, uh, they they should be able to get this. If they started on a Monday, they should be able to finish by Friday, unless there was bad weather during some of those days. And I say bad weather, meaning it could be a cold front come through that would stop them from being able to construct it. The, the temperature has to be, I believe, around 45 degrees and rising in order to lay that asphalt. So if it's not warm enough, they can't lay it. Um, but they generally get one done a day. So the hopes are the humps could be constructed within about five days time. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, I appreciate all of you attending this meeting. Thank you so much for taking up the, your, your evening to join us. And again, if you have any questions, uh, give me a call or shoot me an email. Will do. Thank, thank you. you all. Have a good evening. Yeah, thank you so much, Jeremy. Thank you. Have a good evening, Michael. Thank you, Russell. <laughs> you too. Bye, Mary Kate. Thank you tonight. And thank you everyone for attending. Yeah, thank you.